This video may have imagery that is disturbing to some people, including fake depictions of cannibalism and death. Viewer discretion is advised. Where do we get our morality from? Is it naturally within us or is it something we learn from our culture? Is it what we see as accepted around us? Some people see eating animals as morally wrong, while many people never give it a second thought. Some people live normal lives as happy, nice people, but when tossed into war, will commit actions most people view as atrocities, as evil acts. During wartime, many people do not view the killing and torture of their enemies as morally wrong. Where is their morality coming from then? Why do those people accept their behaviors as normal? If someone were to be raised in a society that is okay with murder, are they culpable for their actions? Would that person be considered morally corrupt? Would they be irredeemable? Today we'll look at the tale of the cannibal community in the 16th century Scotland led by Sonny Bean. Today I want you to think deep and ponder if their children and grandchildren who grew up thinking that eating people was normal should have been held accountable. Join me as we hear the tale of Sonny Bean. As with many old tales, modern historians will debate a number of things. When did the tale of Sonny Bean take place? Was the tale of Sonny Bean fact or fiction? Regardless of these details, it is a story that should make us think and help us learn about ourselves. Sometime during the 15th or 16th century in Scotland, there lived a man named Sonny Bean. A man that would be considered lazy and unskilled at most labor. Sonny and his wife Agnes would leave their hometown of East Lothian and wander along the coast of Scotland. Eventually the two would find a cave to call home. Benin Cave, as it is named, was an extremely large cave with many tunnels and side passages. It's unclear how they survived in the early days of their departure, but as their family grew, the couple would resort to robbing and killing travelers. Sonny and Agnes would emerge from their cave at night and waylay travelers in the dark. They would then bring the bodies back to their cave where they would dismember them, eat their fill, and preserve the rest in pickling barrels. They might have originally intended to just kill their victims to forever silence them, but soon human meat was a regular menu item. As the Bean family continued to grow, all of the children were raised on the never-ending pile of corpses from Sonny and Agnes's nighttime outings. In all, Sonny and Agnes would have 14 children, each most likely thinking it was quite normal to hunt other humans for food. If you were one of those children, what do you think your thought process would be? Would you think this was all normal? Just how life works? Or do you believe there is some deep-seated morality inside of us to alert us that eating other people probably isn't the right thing to do? The Sonny Bean clan would continue to grow to some 45 people strong as the 14 children would produce offspring through incest with each other. How is it that this clan of cannibals got away with this for so long? Well, at first the killings were rare as Sonny and Agnes could survive off of one or two bodies for a long while. But as the clan grew, the people who disappeared from the nearby villages increased. The disappearances definitely began to collect attention, but the beings were careful to never be out during the day, and at first it was suspected that nocturnal predators were responsible. Yet even as people began to suspect that robbers or bandits might be to blame, Sonny's lair could not be found. Benin's cave's entrance would flood twice a day, so if search parties had noticed it, they may have discounted it as a habitable dwelling area. With so many mouths to feed, however, the Sonny Bean clan was attacking travelers with ever-increasing frequency. Eventually, one night, a couple that they had targeted was putting up a lot of resistance. While the clan hunters were trying to subdue them, a group of about 20 people returning from a fair saw the struggle and came to the couple's aid. The woman died, but the man survived, and the Bean clan, foiled for perhaps the first time, retreated back toward their cave. The crowd of fairgoers escorted the survivor to Glasgow, where authorities were alerted. As realization that the attackers might be behind all of the missing people in the area, a search party of 400 men was put together and led by King James himself. With hounds leading the way and picking up the scent of mutilated corpses, the party found its way deep into Benin Cave. There within was found human bodies and bones littered everywhere, and the Sonny Bean clan. The ensuing fight was fierce but short, and all clan members from Sonny and Agnes down to their grandchildren were subdued and arrested. 
The populace was so incensed at the discovery that they forewent any trial and executed them all in Edinburgh. Every member of the Sani Bean clan was then hung or burned until dead. So my questions to you are these. Should the grandchildren of Sani Bean and even his children have been executed? Did their morals come from their parents? Did they realize they were doing something wrong? Do humans have something innate that lets them know right from wrong? Whether the story is fact or fiction, I hope it makes you think. What is right? What is wrong? Where does your morality come from? Your family? Your peers? Your faith? Or does it come from yourself? This has been another Not on Knowledge video. If you are learning anything new on this channel, then consider subscribing. Also, leave a like or comment to help this video get recommended to others. And as always, never stop gnawing. Unless you're gnawing on people like Sonny Bean, then yeah, stop. Because that's just not right. Or is it?